in the last uh, tutorial i just gave a brief idea about tad designer light and uh, the basic concepts and the context in which it this particular software was developed now let me continue uh, from where we last left off so here is the default model which is there in front of you let me give you a little bit more insight into what's happening here uh, so you have your regular mouse which you can see moving around in front of you then apart from that there are three other important el elements uh, which uh, keeps track of your work and which object you are on and things like that there is a small little uh, uh, symbol here which looks like an a and that stands for the architect who's there on this site who's supervising whatever which is going on so you can click on th on that particular symbol and drag that architect to other locations you can do other things with that in fact a lot of con uh, work which happens happens because of this particular architect uh, architect's location then there is a blue dot and a red dot here this blue dot is circular and this red dot is a square dot and this represents this particular uh, the object on which uh, that uh, that is current considered as a current object or the current volume to be more precise the current volume where you are going to work and then you have your regular uh, what you say the elements which you have drawn the or modeled not drawn let me not use the word drawn you are actually creating models by default you are creating uh, some kind of uh, polygonal shape and this polygonal shape you can go here and give it a height and a level so it gets extruded in in the direction towards you so that means this particular uh, square which you see here the outer square I if I right click on that line these two dots they are known as helpers so the helpers shift to that uh, particular volume which I have now demarcated now that volume actually doesn't start off as a volume it starts off actually as a planar uh, poly polygon or a polyline and uh, a closed one y you cannot open that polyline so these are all the basic assumptions which is there in the software and the reason is that they are eventually going to be used to describe volumes so here is a poly polyline which is square in shape in this particular case it happens to be square it can be any shape for for that matter and now uh, i can uh, I, I have pressed the left mouse button and i can drag that uh, that particular polyline wherever i want to the moment i leave my uh, mouse the mouse the left click of the mouse you find that that architect who wherever he was sitting he was sitting somewhere there he he automatically snaps to that point where that first helper is. So he me uh, the f uh, the first helper uh, kind of decides that the architect has to go there. So let me do that once again. So if if I uh, left click drag, I can drag that particular shape around. And if I give a height and a level like the, the way which is given here, that means this has got extruded. Uh, a, a towards you towards you from that screen towards you so that means this level of the screen is zero and then as you come towards you it becomes uh, positive away from you it be away from the screen it becomes negative so i've given a positive height which is 3.83 here which is in meters so therefore this particular volume is a kind of a cube cuboid which is uh, uh, extruded to a, a height of 3.83 meters so that's it that's that's the that's the way uh, uh, this particular shape behaves now tad has got a very intelligent undo like if i click on this undo what it does is that it finds out what is the object you're sitting in and it un undoes the last action on that object so it's a pretty intelligent object oriented undo that means it does not uh, follow your drawing actions actually it follow it keeps it preserves the undo list for each of the objects separately 
which can be pretty interesting and pretty useful many times because you can be editing one object and editing another object and editing a third object and then you decide that oh you know the first object which you edited was uh, ha has to be changed reverted back and you can go back to that first object and then undo that and you find that the other objects have not changed let's try that now for example i'll i'll click here i've gone to another object here and i drag that out now after i drag this out i realize that oh you know what i have to shift this earlier object back now i i make sure that the helpers are sitting that so helpers are something like grips pretty similar to grips excepting that instead of having grips on all the corners of that particular object it have it represent it uh, it sits only on one on one edge of that particular object and you can make it go to uh, sit on other uh, edges also that you use this button and you can make it run around that vertices of that particular object or that volume so now i want to undo this so i the helper is here i have already shifted this remember but what it does is that it will shift that particular so it is now gone back to its original location now if i want to shift this i i put the helper there and again undo that and there it is it is the whole drawing has got reverted back to its original state this is extremely useful and, and this is something which i am very surprised why current software don't have this because uh, having an object oriented undo is a major boon for architects who may think non linearly edit certain shapes and objects uh, at uh, his or her her will and then decide to undo some some part of the design in a non linear fashion that means it is not sequential fashion i am still surprised why they don't have something of this sort in other this is an extremely useful feature so here is uh, another example of the undo so i i do this i come here i do something with that suppose whatever i did with that okay let me show you another command here i i take the architect here and locate this now i can use a second helper if you see the moment the mouse moves on that it goes it shows that you can rotate it so there it is so i'm rotating that particular shape and the sh uh, rotation happens around the architect so the architect decides which is the point at which the rotation happens there are ways to uh, do all this precisely also by giving values that i will tell you in due course of time so i've now rotated this now i realize that i have to shift this back into its original position so i come here and undo that and there it is it has gone back i come here and undo that also and there it is it's gone back so it's pretty pretty useful like okay uh so we have some shapes here you give dimensions uh, of the the level and height and then you can extrude it so that's extrusion in one direction but what if you want extrusions in other directions so that i will tell you later that uses a concept called ground plane so you can actually make it extrude from any plane available on this particular uh, uh project and in this particular model so thereby you can have uh, extrusion happening from any any plane you want something extruded from here something from here something from here or wherever so you can have pretty complex extrusions uh and it all happens here in one uh, one particular site the site is uh, infinite uh, there is no boundaries to the site you can keep on uh, going panning so this is a pan button so I, if i click on that that becomes the next center of the screen and i can keep panning there panning panning all the time the only thing which cannot pan out is the architect so the moment the architects uh, if you try to locate the architect elsewhere it will come back into the visible area of this uh, of the site if i want to relocate where it was so i can uh say zoom extends and there it is we are back again as far as the zoom is concerned this is not undo this is just bringing all the elements together all the objects together at one shape uh, at one uh, into one visible area like so that is as far as uh, uh, some of the idea about how you start working with that 
the mouse if you see the ch- the shape of the mouse is changed into a pointing finger because it tells you that you are in a pan mode you are y- if you click anywhere it will pan even though it pans there are few other commands are still available uh, even though it is in pan mode so for example if i right click it still works now it has shifted its location in there or if i if i want to uh, still move it though it is in the pan mode i can still move it it's in pan mode okay this is pan you it's wherever you click it pans but if you happen to click where the helper is you can drag that objects just like before like so it's like kind of multimodal the system is multimodal so you can do two things at the same time so you are panning also and you are doing some amount of editing also at the same time okay let me undo that also so it comes back to the earlier situation uh, the number of undoes are limited per object but since it is undo per object it is pretty infinite actually like i think in about 10 to 12 undoes are available for each object which uh, my experience says is usually good enough uh, you don't normally need much more than that so you have undo and redo of 10 a- editing action per object each of the object or shape or volume whatever you may call it uh, can be undone 10 to 12 times now whatever you create here you can't just arbitrarily create four lines and then later later on join it it always creates a close shape usually it gives you a rectangle or a or a square depending on what you had initially specified and you have to give it a name and that is a name here so you have to give some name or the other you can't say that i won't give it a name no you'll have to give it some name if you if you are too confused about what name to give just press the space bar write some gibberish leave it at that for the time being okay if you double click on the name it will pan to that particular object so if i double double click on this there it is it comes into visible so this it's this also a pretty unique way of going around a very complex uh, model where you have lots and lots of objects and you do not know where it is all you have to do is just go double click that and it will bring it to you to the center of the screen so it's pretty fast pretty in, uh, intuitive once you get the hang of it okay okay let me undo this once again i love this undo okay so it's back into the way it was earlier i say zoom extends and it was in pristine shape it was the way it was right in the beginning now what are these objects this object is actually a term used in object oriented programming an object can be an architectural object like say a plan or a elevation but i told you it starts its birth as as a 2d shape actually unless and until you give it a height and a level here i happen to give it a height and a level so this particular object is now a volume and that particular volume happens to be a space it's it's written here is kind of atom you don't want that particular kind uh, you have to you can choose what is the kind of space which is there is it an atom connector envelope what are the things which is there in this we'll get to know these terms little later nothing to worry about right now just think that they are spaces so here is one space and i gave it height and level so therefore this is a volume it's not just a shape and this is a name of that particular volume which is called a simple room uh, you don't like the uh, uh, the name so you press the space bar and then you say uh, living room or something like that and press enter so there it is so i've changed the name so you have to give a name it's like giving birth to a person you have to be that person has to be given a name it's as simple as that nothing complex nothing that it uh, it uh, destroys anybody's creativity or anything just because you named it okay you still have not decided so you press the space bar and say whatever let's call it a a a a a you don't like the name you want to decide later fine do that okay your choice i'll revert back to living room so what i do is that i arrange these objects into what is known as a class now this particular set of objects these four objects happens to be in a class called first floor 
which as per american terminology first floor is what they say when there are rooms f- uh, which is the first level of that particular building is usually in us i think it's called first floor in india it's not called first floor it's called ground floor so th- here uh, if you want to rename that uh, you don't use the space bar here here you just gently click once again and it will go into editing mode so here it is so i'll say ground floor and press enter okay i think i used 2g there so what i do is ground floor okay so now uh now what you have to do is to think about uh the what are the other things which is available in this particular thing okay one minute i'll have to do that in my next tutorial my dog has started crying thank you